Good afternoon. I'm here today to welcome a gentleman who requires no introduction, the incomparable Richard Saul Worman. Welcome, and thank you. Would somebody put my mic on? There it is, there it is, there it is. Well, I think a lot of people don't know who I am, so, but that's fine. I, I was here last year, and, um, and they asked me to come back this year. And, uh, and probably because last year I talked about something and it actually happened. And if the next step of it actually happens next year, Maybe they'll bring me back again, or I will be forgotten. I'm a preservationist, but in a different sense, I'm 78. Going on 79, I'm trying to preserve my life. <laughs> and uh, it's not actually hard work, but you just don't want to get hit by that truck. That's what we always said when we grew up. Don't get hit, my mother said, don't get hit by a truck or a bus or something like that. That's the way of, you don't need all those pictures of me. Please, please, please. <laughs> I'm just giving a little talk here, it's a chat, okay? Last year, I'm gonna be very fast because the time is, I have eight minutes and 52 seconds left. And this is really an hour talk. Uh, so I won't show half of the things I brought, which is fine. But what I'm going to show you, very simply, it's not professionally done. I'm not a professional. I don't work for anybody. I have no clients. I am gainfully unemployed. I live in a town of 26,000 people, Newport, Rhode Island, and enough is preserved there to fill up the nation. Uh, last year I talked about something that I first wrote about in 1962. In 1962, I was an assistant professor of architecture, and I did a little project with 50 Cities of the World plans of all those cities to the same scale. I thought it had been done many times before, and apparently it hadn't. And, uh, and in 67, for MIT, I did an elaborate at atlas of 20 cities in America called Urban Atlas. Again, comparative information. Then it laid dormant. I did some guidebooks in between. I started the TED conference. And I, uh, uh, I got to meet uh, Jack Dangerman a few years ago, who owns Esri, which is the largest maker of software, software for maps in the world. He owns Landsat and GIS. He sort of controls. And I sort of conned him. And my whole life is sort of a scam and a con. Uh, I, I, I am, I'm Tom Sawyer. Don't look like him, but I try to get people to pay me to paint the fence. And uh, so I thought we should look into comparative, comparative uh, information about cities. Can you put it on my thing now? OK. So I, 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 don't, I don't do this well. Man, oh, mankind's ability to perceive. This is the first urban observatory. This is 16 cities in the world, and they're, compar they're comparatively they're photographically. And you'll see eventually. Uh, all kinds of data, 16 layers of data. We just built this for one week. Cost a lot of money for one week. But uh, we uh, showed the plans all comparatively of cities. And I hope in, within a year we'll have 100 cities. And uh, it'll be uh, much better graphics. And uh, it'll live off the cloud. So this is uh, when we have empty spaces, we didn't get the cities. We didn't get the information from the cities. This is not meant to be. This is a work in progress. Uh, and uh, so you can, this will run for a few minutes when it finishes. But you can see what it's like. It's fairly big. And uh, it was really joyous uh, to see it completed, this first thing. And, and people spent, this was at the Esri conference where there's 16,000 cartographers from around the world. And this became the centering place for everybody to come and look at comparative cities. And every few minutes when it ran its cycle, it would move over and one more city would come on because we, we didn't think we'd get 16 and in the end we got a few more, so we kept on doing that. Um, when, is this still, is it stopped? Okay, I'll go to something else. This is some, these are some stills of it.
And this is based on an adage, one of my mantras is you only understand something relative to something you understand. That's Werman's first law. There's my name, John Kamen, who owns Radical Media, and Jack Dangerman, who owns Esri. This is looking at all the images at once. There's Will I Am, and there's Jack Dangerman. Okay. That's it. Now, then we had a poster and all that stuff. Uh, then we have online now. Uh, if you go online, this is free. And you can go online and you can look at this. This is called urbanobservatory.org and there's 16 cities and it's free. You can just go and look at these cities. Now, this is still really just in development stage. I don't like it that much. It's okay. I'm improving the graphics. This is a demo. And you can go and uh, this is doing it itself because they didn't trust me. <laughs> so, uh, but the, if you make one city bigger, the others get bigger. If you make them smaller, they get smaller. You can push. Uh, the cities up there, and you can pull, draw them down and put them in whichever ones you want. And there's these, I developed a new cartography which has all of the information about a city in five big categories instead of a million categories. No two cities do their maps to the same scale or with the same ledges. They don't collect their maps in the same way, their information in the same way. And one city calls it, you know, uh, industrial land use, another one light and heavy industrial. They call them all different things. We all know that. There's no way of talking to each other. The same way that in the world today there's a hurricane is called a cyclone someplace else and called something. There's no, there's no, there's no language that uh, astrophysicists and small particle physicists talk the same way. We don't have language so we can talk to each other, uh, which I find just horrific, just horrific. And so I'm trying to just do a cardiographic language. So I, I don't know how long this takes, but I move it on when it's finished. This is fun to play with. It's fun to look at this. Okay. And we will have many more layers of information where old people live, where young people live. We'll be able to put them across from each other. You can't do this with Google Earth. I mean, you can't, you don't, can't do comparative information or patterns. Creative people think of patterns. The woman before me is a pattern maker. She's a dressmaker. Everybody makes patterns. Patterns are what the, how the creative mind works. Okay? And you start seeing these things, and then you, we'll be able to ask many more questions. We'll be able to take part of the word question, which is the word quest, and actually have a quest to find out something. Most of us were asked shitty questions. This is a way of focusing in on better questions. When this is over, there's something else. So, so you see, it's interesting. I mean, I think you guys should be interested in this. <laughs> I mean, I really do. I mean, I find it fascinating, and I'm not very bright. See that? They're radically different. You can't, what works in one city, you can't export to another. Just because you say, it's great, oh, that's wonderful, we want to do it here. No! You want to understand it in context. Everything you have to understand in context. You can't export and import ideas, except in context. I know that's not what you're taught. OK, I don't know how long this goes on. Let me see how much time I have. I have one minute and 54 seconds. So I have a nice film you're not going to see. I can't make this go faster. I can stop it, I think. Can I move it to the next thing? I think if I push it, it goes to the next thing. Does it? I'll push it again. There. So I see this. Is, so you see something getting bigger and something getting smaller. You can do all that with it. That's primitive. And then this is. I want to have urban observatories around the world. I'd like to have 100 urban observatories around the world where you can go in and you can see comparative information about cities and the world. And uh, you can go up to things. You can see things. And you can talk to other people in the world. When you go up, you can speak English. They can come up on the screen. And they can speak another language. And you hear it in English. And they hear you in Finnish. And we're right at the cusp of doing that. We can all speak the same language. And that's interesting, too. See? see, you can see people in other places and talk to them. And it's a different kind of museum. It's a live museum. It's off the cloud. It changes as things change. You don't have objects. You are the object in the museum. The objects aren't in there. 
Then I'll just tell you about this, which is a little outgrowth of it. I'm doing this starting next October. It's called 555. I'm doing a conference that lasts five weeks. You know I did TED, I did EG, I did TED Med, and I did WWW last year. I think I talked about that total improvisation of a conference with no presentations but improvised conversation among people. Next October, for all of October, five weeks around the world. It's going to start in Australia and go to Asia, go around different cities around the world on successive Monday. Stop the pictures for just a second. Uh, around the world, uh, and each conference is going to have only five speakers. They're going to give long-form presentations. And the long-form presentation is going to be in a very narrow band of each speaker's expertise. And they're going to be predicting something in that narrow band for the next five years. So it's going to be finding the future first. And it's going to be, there'll be no politicians and there'll be no CEOs. Legally, CEOs can't uh, tell the truth because of their stockholders if it's a public company. And politicians, we know, can't tell the truth. There won't be any, there won't be any, uh, well, it's, it's not funny. The fact is, that's not funny. Uh, that's what's funny about it. It's not funny. Uh, and there'll be no uh, doom and gloom people or religious leaders. Uh, so it'll be constructive. I don't know why people are laughing at that. That's perfectly obvious you wouldn't have those people. Uh, but what it will be, it will be people like Craig Venter will tell what life forms he will invent in the next five years, or some person in energy, or, or Dean Kamen will talk about uh, certain things in, in, in water and its relationship to methane as, as a heat source. And various people in various fields, not only science and medicine, will talk about what they think can happen in the near future. And then all 25 people will get together in New York City and an improvised conversation will tell about how should the world prepare. Because for, if you had a trillion dollars, most of you would spend all trillion dollars on lowering the carbon footprint. I'd spend half of it on how do we prepare for the global warming that's going to happen anyway to some extent. How do you prepare for things that happen? When you cure, when you have a, within a year or so, or it might be, they say three years, but it might be sooner than that, uh, ability to get a shot and not get malaria, a million, more, a million people will live a year. How do you prepare for that extra million people? You just let them starve to death, or there's a preparation? Is there a two-part thing to that invention, that discovery? Everything has a reaction, and I'm always interested in reaction. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I know half the population of Europe died uh, in the 1347 uh, to 52 Black Plague. I'm interested in the half of the population that didn't die. Uh, that's fascinating to me because that's us. Uh, that's in our genes. We didn't die at that time, or many of us didn't die. I guess that's the end. <laughs>